Joining me from Azerbaijan, Baku is Leon. Hello, Leon. Another day, Hi, another Sabir. tournament victory. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> this this year, twenty twenty three, has been a year of tournament wins for you. Uh, which which one is it? Is it your fourth tournament victory? I have no idea. Maybe. Wow. This, is, of this is already a great answer. You know, <laughs> when someone says, I don't know how many tournaments I've won, <laughs> you can be sure it's a good year for, for him. Uh, but yeah, it was a, it was a phenomenal event. Uh, just to show everyone how strong this tournament was, you, you yourself were the 11th seed. Uh, and there was Hans, Neiman, Alexander Predke, Anton Korobov, uh, very strong players. And your performance was a very solid 27-30 performance, unbeaten, uh, 7 out of 9. Were you pleased with your overall play here? Mm, yeah, I guess so. Like mm, All the games I think pretty interesting, except maybe for the 7th uh, and 8th round, which were like pretty quick draws. Mm. But I think in general, yeah, I played pretty decently. Yeah, you, those draws were a little bit uncharacteristic of you. Were you tired or you thought that, okay, I need to pace myself? What was the reason you made those short draws? Uh, it was not like planned or anything because that 12 move draw I played against Mamedov, it took like close to three hours. Oh. So, yeah, it was very, it was the, the whole thing was very strange. The game was only very strange, I think. And it was just like uh, we were reaching low on time and it was like hardly a position out of the opening. And so he offered a draw and I thought I was I am slightly better, but with such low time, it's like not worth it playing on to like to get to the 40th. So I just accepted. Is but it, is it was it, uh, yeah. possible for you to explain your thought process? Because it's very interesting that in 12 yeah. moves, uh, you although you played only 12 moves, you thought for three hours. So just I mean, we don't want to go very deep into the game. Yeah. But where, where yeah, was so, it exactly that you started to think? Well, this is all theory, right? Uh, this is yeah, but I was not too familiar with it, and like I, I didn't expect this line, this Tarash line. And usually, I know the Bishop G five move uh, better, but I thought, okay, you must have prepared for that. So that's why I went for this, and I thought I should somehow try to play without Knight C three. And okay, here in this position, I thought B three was a normal move, so I played B three. And then after like five minutes, he played knight e4. And it seemed to me that uh, b3 was like not the best move mm -hmm. from judging from his reaction. Yeah. And after thinking for some time, I realized that actually um, this very annoying threat of bishop f6 is very hard to meet. Right. So that's why I thought for like close to like 35 minutes on bishop b2, mm -hmm. just to like uh, figure out what to do in bishop f6. It was <laughs> wow. surprisingly difficult. Yeah. So that's that's how uh, it became like you had to take a lot of time uh, and maybe yeah. you know, I guess he got a, I wouldn't say better of you, but he, he prepared better the opening than you in this game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, um, yeah, I, in, during that thought, I realized that I should now be playing for equality only because B3 was not accurate. That's also a very, uh, not very easy thing to do, right? When you're fighting for the tournament victory and stuff like that, but you're playing on the top boards and you're playing with white, mm -hmm. you want to generally yeah. push. So to, exactly. to sort of get your mind back to now, okay, it's it's mm -hmm. fine. I didn't do it so well in the opening. That's That must not be yeah. so easy. Yeah, that's why I spent so long, 35 minutes, to just realize and understand this. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to a game where you had a great result. Okay. Uh, that is your game against Hans Niemann. Uh, is it is it your first win against a 2700? Yes, and I think only my second game against a 2700. What, really? Yeah, like the first one was against Fedosi in 2017. I think, no, 2019, sorry, 2019 in Sharjah. Australia. Oh, wow. So so this is your only second game against a 2700 player. I know that's going to change very soon. You are going to play in Sharjah Masters where you may face many more 2700 rated players. But let's go through this game. Uh, Hans, of course, a very strong player. Uh, and before the game, did you get some time to prepare? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was like a three three p.m. game, so I got the morning to prepare. Okay. And what was your yeah, feeling him. like when you were preparing against him? Which direction were you trying to go into? Mm, basically, I wanted to try and surprise him because yeah, he he'll know like pretty much same or more opening than me if I play normally. So I thought if I surprise him, I might have a better chance of like um, getting an advantage. And it worked out pretty well actually in this game because I played the Catalan, and yes, he thought he like for five Benoni. minutes. Yeah, five minutes he thought before going for the Benonis. Benoni. So, yeah, he definitely did not expect this line from me. Got it. Uh, but I think he got a pretty fine position right out of the opening. I mean, this is a standard yeah. position, rookie eight, bishop yeah. f4. And now he. Went and h6 is this relatively new move. In fact, I played it myself with black like a couple of months ago. Which Rihari, right? In December 2022. Yeah. Yeah, correct. And, and that game didn't go so well for you at that point. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So, so mm, yeah, I thought with white it made me. Well, not what's too the much. idea of this move? Is, is it like a waiting move, or are you preparing knight h5 to stop bishop g5? What What's the point? It might be g5. It could also be knight h5, but in general, I think it's g5 mostly. Mm. Okay. So queen c1. So uh, you you were you thought for four minutes. Were you prepared or now you started thinking? Um, no, I was just trying to recollect. I had, I had not prepared uh, seriously for this line. I just checked it very briefly. So I was recollecting and like uh, making sure I knew where I was going. Like otherwise, I would change here if I do not know. Correct. Um, later on, what's going on? So yeah. G five. This was B five. Knight D seven. And now, uh, here you played the move h4 pretty quickly. This is like the general reaction to this h6, g5 in the line. So, right. queen c1 and uh, h4 like this. Okay. And and he went for the move knight g4. If if g4, do you think this was possible or? Yeah, this is generally what happens like if knight g4 is not possible. And uh, like basically the knight can go either to like d2, c4 or... E1 sometimes and C2. I'm a but little I think bit I would have worried about this. No? Yeah, but in this case, I think like white black's king side is quite uh, weak. So it might not be as strong. And also white can hide his king on H2. So there's not really um, too many threats, I guess. Got it. Okay. So he went knight G4, which is logical because now he wants to take on E3, spoil your structure. You, of yeah. course, don't allow it. You go back. F6. <laughs> And still following your game with uh, which yeah. Nihari. And now... Now, uh, yeah. With, I remembered B4 as a possibility. But, also but A4 you thought for was... 18 minutes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because... Okay, after B4, B6 looked pretty much forced. Because he can't like allow me to take BC5 and get the D4 square. So, I was just basically wondering what to do in this position. Um... And that's why I spent so long. Basically, I knew B4 was possible. So, this is bad, by thought, the way, right? Because of... Yeah, yeah. I get, like, the D4 square, Knight C7 is a threat, yeah. Correct. Okay. So, he, he played B6, and now, again, you thought for eight and a half minutes and played Knight B5, mm -hmm. uh, attacking yeah. the D6 pawn. Mm -hmm. He went... Yeah, I just wanted to regroup the Knight, like, it was pretty much doing nothing on C3, so... Mm -hmm. Create some threats, and if it's pushed back, then it can go to knight a3 and c4. Ah, so, yeah, nice, smart. Okay, so you got that b, b c b c, and now queen came up to c2. Very interesting. I, I believe that if he took here, you wanted to take with the pawn, he takes, yeah. Ah, yes, and the thing is, f4 is there, so unless he's getting some tactics with knight d3 or knight c4 when my queen is on c1, it does not really work out. Got it. So he played queen d7, attacking your knight. Uh, slightly unusual move, yes? Uh, this one. Queen yeah, d7. I did not consider it, although it's kind of a um, common move in this whole line, this line with um, which he has played with h6, g5, and the spawn on f6. But for some reason, I did not consider it. I only saw, from what I remember, I only saw like rook b8, not rook b8, a6, and then rook b8, those kind of moves Got without queen d7. Hmm. Yeah. 
The bishop a6 is possible or not really? Um, but then it's kind of dangerous because the king side, the light squares on the king side would be weakened. So if I play something like rook b1 or a4, hmm. then like it's very dangerous to give up this bishop, I think. Right. These are all weak squares here. Got it. So he went queen d7. You played rook b1. Very natural move. He went a6. And now knight a3. Yes. As you mentioned, you want to go to the c4 square. This is where your knight yeah. belongs. Attacking here and looking here. Yeah. And he played this very quickly. Not very quickly, but fairly quickly, I would say. And yeah, around here, I realized that I have to like um, play pretty accurately because... Mm -hmm. He would get a fine position otherwise. But once and... again, you thought for 20 minutes. I, I believe that you mm -hmm. must have come under heavy time trouble, right? In this game, was there a 40 minute, 40 move rule? Yeah, there was a 40th move time control. But normally, I kind of make up for it later on. So even if I spend a lot of time, the next, I play quickly the uh, later on. So okay. I don't think I came under heavy time pressure. Maybe around 30 or 30, 35th move, maybe it could have mm -hmm. been. But right, basically, right my idea now was it's to uh, move uh, move twenty one, and you you took here. Yeah, you were saying your idea was. Yeah, my idea was originally to play rook b six, which was very natural. Mm -hmm. But um, suddenly, I noticed the problem is knight d seven. Oh. And if I take the pawn, bishop f eight. He takes on e two. No, 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 not bishop. Bishop f eight. I have c six as a square. Right, right. So rook e two. Hmm. And here, like, I realized it's not easy to make a move because everything is stuck on the king side. Like, knight c4, there's some bishop f8 and bishop d3 stuff. So, yeah, rook c6 and bishop d3, yeah. Ah. So, that's the reason why you said, okay, let me take on e5. Hmm. So, yeah, I just noticed this idea after a very long, very long time. It was, that's why I spent so long if I notice it soon, how it played so Right, <laughs> of course. But now e4. So I'm just uh, thinking he went back bishop g6. Yeah, this is also a very strange point because after like knight e5, knight e5, e4, I think he should have realized at least that um, f4 and f5 is going to happen. And like it's very dangerous strategically at least the position for black. So what should he have done? Bishop d7? Bishop d7, I think, had to be played. But then you would still have gone here, right? Yeah, but at least he can put his bishop on b5 and try for some tactics like that. Because the bishop on the king side is dead anyways. So, bishop d7 had to be played. Uh, okay, so let's see how that panned out. Uh, knight f7, mm. f5, bishop h5. Mm. And he thought his bishop is okay here because there is no g4 coming. Yeah, but it's very suspicious, the whole idea. <laughs> right. Because all the pieces are kind of dead on the king's side. So. But but I like this knight's knight has now a good square on e5. Bishop, of course, looks terrible. Yeah, this is the main problem mm. piece. But the knight yeah. is well placed. Yeah, but my idea is like, uh, like if he goes knight e5, I always can play like bishop c3 and I have the potential of just taking it off and ah. get, getting the c4 square. And then putting your knight here after you take. Wow. Okay, let's see. He took here took here okay now actually taking here might be dangerous for him because now you get the g5 yeah yeah i mean it depends g5 can be used for both sides so <laughs> true it depends who uses it so knight e5 you went bishop but, c3 um, with with your dangerous idea of taking here and knight c4 yeah he came to d3 yeah he was trying for some tricks but to me, it feels like it should not work at all. Yeah. Hmm. You went rook c2. Yeah, again, rook c2, I think, was my final. Like Now I was under time pressure here from here on because normal moves to just play rook d2. Right. And knight f4. And knight e2 is a threat, so rook e1. But later on, I thought I would want to reroute my bishop through d2 because... I just had that uh, thought to reroute my bishop there. So that's why I played the rook to c2. And d2, I thought it's doing nothing much. So rook c2. Okay. So knight f4, you went to e1. Now you have defended your e4 pawn. So he can take on g2 if he likes. Oops, sorry. Yeah. And uh, 
he went rook a7 and now you've got in your knight here somehow leon magic i don't know how to call it but you have managed to just out maneuver him um but once i got f4 f5 i think it was pretty easy because this was just my plan it, it was not stoppable so just bishop c3 knight c4 was quick so yeah he, he should have done something before f4 f5 happened got it yeah. do, you, do you think that when you took on e5 here he he should have taken with something else like pawn but that also doesn't look good no right? no knight in b5 is pretty forced yeah because if, first of all the g5 pawn is hanging but even otherwise i think like it's still bad because knight on g4 is now misplaced got it so but yeah bishop d7 was forced i guess it's the only chance for him to yes this was important he going back to g6 i think just simply spoiled everything so knight c4 bishop yeah. f8 and now nice little mooking h2 as we said the g file is important you are making way uh there knight g2 and you just no basically he just wanted tricks like with rook g7 but it was not working because of bishop and f6 and <clears throat> um no instead of knight into g2 ah here okay rook g7 bishop f6. and bishop f6 rook g4 and bishop f3 and it's over so that's why he was forced to take right so he took here here yet king at seven and now you played no. rook g3 stopping bishop f3 mm -hmm. by now you would be very sure right that you would win this game Mm, for me, it was more like to get to the time control and then figure things out. <laughs> okay. Because okay. because there's there's absolutely no counter place, so I just do something till the time control, ah, not spoil the position. This is nice. For the first <laughs> repeat once, then bring your king in. Yeah. Uh, and now it's rook g1. He went bishop f8. But uh, the this funny thing is, blunder. on on fortieth move, you had to take this. Yeah, I just made sure it's checkmate. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have <laughs> defended the pawn and played for another 20 moves. And one. So, here, here, here. Yeah. Where is the checkmate? Or it's just winning a rook? I would take a piece. Yeah, rook b7. Rook b7. Okay. So, rook b7 he played. And now after rook g8, the 30 minutes had been added to the clock. And rook h8 is coming up. So he resigned. Wow, very smooth win, Leon. That was very nicely done by you. And uh, there was another game which was very important. You played against the recently minted uh, Grandmaster of Indian Chess, Pranit, who has become the 82nd GM of India. Have you, have you played with him before as well? Yeah, I played twice before with him. First was in, again, in the World Juniors in last year in October okay and also just last month I think or maybe it was this month in Formentera in Spain well, what do you have to say about him as a as a player uh, because I I haven't interviewed him many times I want to know him better is he an aggressive player positional player I think he is more positional but um, he is definitely very strong and he's improved really really a lot in the last like um, one year at least and mm. i think he's he's very strong basically and he's he i thought definitely he would become a gem very soon like the last time i played him before this and yeah he proved it right of course and um yeah i think he will become also much stronger in the future because i think he's he was a very difficult for opponent for me at least well that's very nice coming from you because you know you have been Moving up the ladder, you now reach 2620 and Pranit also is close to 2500 now um, and he's 2007 born. So very talented young guy. Uh, you are playing with black against him last round. Uh, going into this, were you, I know that you are not really thinking about the results, right? That's what you had mentioned. Just focus yeah. on the play. But does a thought ever cross your mind that, okay, if I win, I can fight for the top spot or nothing of that sort? Yeah, of course, definitely. I mean, it's if I win, it's the best result possible yeah, because I knew it would be the first or second hmm. and most probably first. But also, I did not want to 
push too much because it can easily backfire. And generally, I do not also push too much. I just like um, wait for the chance, yeah, the real chance. So um, I was not really um, like, I just played my normal game. <laughs> As it's, if it it's was nice game. to have Sicilian Nidorf as your normal weapon because that always gives <laughs> you good winning chances. Yeah. It's a sharp line. Yeah, yeah. Bishop e7, bishop e3. Tell me till what point was it your prep? Knight d5 yeah. looks quite this is all the Yeah, this is the main line in this whole bishop e2 line. Yeah, queen d3, castles, castles. Bishop d5, e d5. Yeah, here there are like thousands of games and the main move is rook c8, also knight e8. I'm not sure which is the main move, but these are the two poss main possibilities. Yeah. There's also knight c5. I remember this knight c5 move and then you can put your bishop here, right? And play that way. Yeah, yeah. There was, after knight c5, it was some, I think, Anand's game, if I'm not mistaken. But um, knight into c5 was not played in that game, if I remember correctly. Ah, okay. But yeah, yes, Anand is a fan, and also Ponomario <laughs> Anand. I mean, yes, yeah, Ponomario. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's uh, so you went h5. This is your uh, mm. secret prep huh? before the game. <laughs> yeah, I had this idea and I was kind of waiting to use it. Nice, and I thought, okay, now he'll start thinking for like 10 minutes. Mm. I can go to the washroom, <laughs> put some, uh, fill some water, everything. But then in one minute he replied, and I was very upset. <laughs> so, so do you think he was prepared for H five? Yeah, he wow. he knew the move, unfortunately. Wow, that is something the, because I see I see yeah. the players list, and I I don't mm -hmm. see like too many strong players. Surya Ganguly has played it once with black. Yeah. There are only like 12 games in H5 and very few like real top games. Right. So, uh, yeah, I was surprised that he knew them. Amazing. That's great prep by him. A4, you now went knight g4. That mm. is one of the ideas of playing H5. He went back. Yeah. Bishop, bishop g5. g5. Mm. This is a good exchange because, yeah, bishop on e7 is just passive. He went but also in exchange, he gets a lot of tempos, tempi on the queen side to like start pushing. Yes, I think White's main idea here is somehow to get this set up and then try for c5 mm. break or something of that sort. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, That's you have to side. play on the king side or in the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's generally the plan. In this case, I think I had to play for like... Uh, b6 try to get b6 in yeah this was the first real point where i had to think because i forgot what i had prepared okay. i had not revised this exactly during the game uh, before the game and apparently rook e8 was more accurate instead of g6 preparing e4 or yeah preparing e4 and yeah the line goes on but rook e8 was more accurate okay so you went g6 he went rook a3 yeah Queens. Maybe knight d2 was a bit more accurate, but I guess rook a3 is fine. Hmm. Okay, queen c7, he went knight d2 anyway. Rook f, yeah. oh, you're playing on the queens. How, how do you know that you must go for b6 and not for e4, knight e5 and stuff like that? Because I remembered in my notes b6 or b5 was there. <laughs> 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 okay, but, but generally, if you do this, a6 could become a weakness. Yeah, yeah, it's always like a double edged decision to go like b6 or not. But um, I thought after if I play for e4, then just queen will sit on e3, and uh, it's very slow. My counterplay is very slow. So I have to like push on, on the queen side only. Okay, but now yeah, and, this c6 uh, square is weakened. Uh, hmm. Let's see how, how he continues. He, go, he goes knight c4 here okay yeah but also one moment before rook c3 i think this was the last point where you could have like stayed better clearly like uh, if he played a into b6 okay rook b6 and the point is if c3 there's rook b4 hmm. so instead of c3 he had to play this uh, move rook b1 which might be a bit counterintuitive but I was worried about it during the game. And also c4 next coming up. 
I'm not sure whether White should play C4 or not because normally White would like to play C4, but in this case he has like pressure on A6. So mm -hmm. and also he can use the C4 square for the knight in Got the it. future. Got it. So it might be a decision for him to make whether to actually play it or not. Right. Okay. So you went rook. Uh, he went rook C3. You came back, and now he went knight to C4. Okay. Now d6 is under pressure, so is b6, you played b8, okay, and he took with the knight. I think his position looks great, right? He's coming into c6. What's your, what, what is... I also, yeah, it looks great for white, but I have this concrete move with rook b5, which is what I played in the game. And I put pressure on the d5 pawn. Ah, you're going for the d5 pawn. So he came into c6, queen b6, okay, fine. Um, in fact, uh, queen b6, I spent like really a long time again mm. because my original idea is just to play queen e8, the simple move to, keep... to cover e7. Yeah, exactly. Then this, how does he defend mm. this pawn? Yeah, but then I noticed he plays this move rook k3 with the idea to push c4. So I have to take some on d5. If I take with the knight, okay, rook is rook takes the main move, but if I take with the knight, then rook into a6, and unfortunately, I can't do anything here. Wow, that's a nice bit of calculation. Take here and here. Okay. Basically, I'm lost strategically. That's the reason. Material might be equal, but um, yeah, mm. it's different. So you take with the rook? Rook d5, then queen e3. And suddenly my pieces are <laughs> discordant. Mm -hmm. Even to consider this is not easy, right? Uh, this is amazing calculation. Uh, What's the reason why you are worse? Because now a6 falls and his yeah. knight and is very well And also the rook placed. on d5. Your knight is yeah, hard to push out and also the rook is in trouble. If I attack the knight, then he just pushes c4. Wow. Okay, this is very, very cool. Very nicely calculated. So you went queen b6. Yeah. I just have to make sure I'm not losing. <laughs> because if I'm not losing, then it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, but the, look at this. This is hanging. You can't take on d5 because of knight e7. Yeah. Could he have moved the queen somewhere where this e4 move was not coming? No, that was the whole point. <laughs> he cannot. <laughs> because if he because goes queen g3, there is this, right? Fork. Yeah. If queen and g3, knight e4. If queen, queen d2, uh, d2 knight e4. Queen d1, queen maybe? D1, I think knight d5 works still. Knight d5. Mm. Ah, c3 is hanging. Okay, fine. So he went queen f. Wow, this is. And now you get e4. So there's no time for yeah. him to take, uh, to sort of take here. Yeah. You went this. Uh, he went this. You took on d5, attacking his mm -hmm. rook. Yeah. He took back. And now you and here make... queen into b5 was a bit better, but okay, it's hard to make this decision decision in time pressure. A b5 looks very natural. Mm. And I saw till here at least before playing queen b6 because otherwise it's just losing. So this is not working here. Knight c3. Um, I didn't think about it, but I guess knight e7 was always an issue. King f8, and now ah okay d7 is hanging and. But also knight e2 check, so I'm not sure exactly. Uh, maybe you can just take queen into c3 and there's some queen e8 business. Queen e8? No, like if you take a b5, then the queen h8, sorry. Queen h8 and queen e8. Ah, okay. But yeah, if you take king e7, it's suspicious. So e5. I didn't think about that. E5, yeah. Ah, okay. Got it. Probably so, knight d5 is stronger though. <laughs> when? When? You miss your mouse slip knight d5. Eh? Uh, I was thinking, <laughs> I got a bit confused there. Queen c3, ah, okay. a, b5. No, you played a, b5 ah, yeah, and knight you knight d5. Got it, got it, got it. Ah, okay. But yeah, basically this knight e7, it's, it, generally such things do not work. So I, I just saw a, b5 and I was happy with it. Okay. So rook d1. And now came a yeah. very important move Yeah, for people. I think this was the move I really liked. It's the only hmm. move here for black. Had you seen this beforehand or on this move you saw it? No, like before he played rook, B, rook d1 when he was thinking for a bit, I saw it. Okay. Because what was the but other I don't move think... you can play here? 
H4 is also winning, but uh, I'm not going to go there. Too complicated, I think. Okay, let me try to break down this position. Firstly, uh, taking this is possible, no? Yeah, but he can just take back, I guess. He can take back. So what you thought is that instead of first taking, let me push the pawn to e3. And now the rook is hanging on c3. The pawn has come in between. And if he yeah. takes here, rook e3, then at the end of it, the c6 knight... Okay, you have a check. Yeah, but king f8 still wins, luckily. for. And now what? Rook e8? Exchange queens. Ah, sorry, sorry. First exchange. What am I doing? Huh? And this. Okay, got it. And, uh... But... Um... Yeah, e3 was a nice shot, but if he had played rook e1 instead, I think it was balanced, maybe. After e3? In instead of e3, because e3 wins, hmm. but instead of rook d1. Ah, okay. Here if he had played rook e1, yeah. Game would go on. Still complex, anything could happen. Got it. e3, knight e7, you took, and now he took here, but... Yeah, I think for him also it would have come as a bit of a surprise, right? That there is nothing to be mm. done with this move now with e3. This rook is kind of trapped. I'm not sure it was a surprise, but definitely he missed it. Mm. And more disappointment than surprise, I would say, for anybody. And what about uh, rook here? I can just take on c6 at least. That's what I thought during game. And then take and rook d5. E2. E2 is the point. And also the point here is that if he takes here. Then EF2. EF2. And pawn. <clears throat> I'm just winning the queen or I queen the pawn by K1. Amazing. Okay. So knight E7 check takes here. Queen E3 take, take. Knight F6. And now it's it's not so difficult to convert this. 95. Your knights are very strong. Mm -hmm. Ah, nice. Which mm -hmm. if he takes the knight, there's a fork. So you went oh. here, mm -hmm. and you won. Wow! And with this, you won the tournament. You won the title, uh, and uh, you also won this trophy. <laughs> Do you have it yeah. with you? Uh, yeah, I have it here. Is it very big? No, not really. I can show you once. This is the Haider Aliyev Trophy and uh, Baku Open. Wow. No, it's quite big. And I mean, it's not very big, but it's carrying it will not be so easy. At, uh, in yeah, the, it's like... pretty heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but this is like the uh, cover for it. You can just take it out. Ah, you can take it out. Wow. Yeah. I think it's a very pretty trophy. Did uh, what? Was, yeah. I think also the prize money was yeah. very good, right? Of this event. Yes, it's the uh, biggest I've earned so far. <laughs> wow. Is it 10,000 euros? Um, twelve thousand dollars. Wow, that's amazing. That's almost like ten lakh rupees, and uh, you know, winning it by playing uh, and playing such a good event is is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you also get this watch? Yeah, it's a clock, and it's pretty big. It's a clock, and um, it's a souvenir, like a handmade uh, souvenir from Azerbaijan, like that. Wow. And and the thing is, uh, you you used to also play basketball during this event. Yeah. <laughs> Was it one of yeah, your like secrets to stay in stay fit during the event, or what was it? Not really a secret, but I just like playing basketball. So. Because because I know you are a great footballer. Uh, how, how no, <laughs> that was just, uh, <laughs> that's maybe just because I was born, but not really great, I think. <laughs> I mean, at mm -hmm. least better than everyone who was present there when we were together at a camp. <laughs> I think you were very good. Uh, but I guess so. Yeah. How, how is your uh, basketball skills? How are how are the skills there? I, it's definitely much better than my football because I stopped playing football and uh, like I don't like I just don't play anymore. It's not like I stopped playing. I don't play anymore. 
ओपन <laughs> so it's a yes. nice uh, <laughs> sort of a circle there uh leon yeah. would you say this is uh, one of the strongest is it the strongest tournament you have won till date definitely definitely yeah amazing and uh, i think we spoke last time uh, it was very inspiring how you managed to sort of make those little changes in your game whereby you had mentioned mm-hmm. that you were looking a lot at the engines but now you want mm-hmm. to focus on making practical decisions and that really helped you uh, and and actually that keeps continuing now you've reached a rating of 26 20 plus what's next for you uh, what's what are the plans coming up i'm playing the sharja masters next which starts in 3 days on the 17th and after that the french league french league mm, that's it for now we haven't really planned after that and i think this trip has been going on for quite some time right yeah from february <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it guys yeah. four five months of chess and then the small break there i'm sure you'll be back on the road again leon it was a pleasure talking to you getting to know about your tournament victory thank you for sharing it with us thank you very much for inviting me also